With the Kerr metric in hand, we can take a closer look at the space-time around black holes. It helps to see how they can actually form, and it will provide information on how they might be detected. You'll recall explosions at the end of life for stars less than five times the mass of the Sun leave behind a white dwarf. In these stars, electron exclusion pressure is enough to counteract the inward force of gravity. Supernova explosions at the end of life of stars more than five times the mass of the Sun leave behind a neutron star. In these stars, electron exclusion pressure is insufficient to overcome the force of gravity, but neutron exclusion pressure is. But if a star is greater than 30 times the mass of the Sun, even neutron exclusion pressure won't do the trick. In fact, there is no known force that will counteract the inward force of gravity for such a supernova or hypernova exploding star. According to Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, the star will collapse into zero volume and infinite density. This is called a singularity. This defines a black hole. It gets its name from the fact that such a singularity would create a gravitational pull that not even light could escape. The object literally becomes invisible. In 1916, Carl Schwarzschild, contemporary of Einstein, solved his equation for the special case of a non-rotating sphere. He found that although the diameter of the singularity is zero, the radius at which light would be captured depends entirely on the mass of the black hole. This is called the Schwarzschild radius, and it defines the event horizon. But it would be the rare black hole that doesn't spin. In 1963, Roy Kerr developed a general solution for spinning black holes. It showed that there is a second region beyond the event horizon that defines a volume around the black hole called the ergosphere. In this region, space itself is dragged around by the black hole's spin. Also in this region, light can enter stable orbits around the black hole. This would produce a photon spherical shell encasing the black hole with the light from all the stars in the universe accumulated over the entire age of the black hole it would be a sight to see. But given that the light is trapped in orbit, we can only see what leaks out. Another important boundary is the innermost stable circular orbit, ISCO for short. It's the smallest orbit, where a particle can stably orbit the black hole. Its radius depends on the black hole's mass and spin, 